हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू लेक्चर ट्वेल्व ऑफ दिस कोर्स द लास्ट फाइव लेक्चर्स आई हैव डिस्कस अबाउट रोटेशनल स्पेक्ट्रोस्कोपी वाइब्रेशनल स्पेक्ट्रोस्कोपी रोटेशनल वाइब्रेशनल स्पेक्ट्रोस्कोपी एंड रामन स्पेक्ट्रोस्कोपी वी हैव लुकड एट बोथ थ्योरी एंड एप्लीकेशन ऑफ दीज स्पेक्ट्रोस्कोपी टेक्निक्स इन दिस लेक्चर आई विल डिस्कस अबाउट problems related to this spectroscopy so i will start with multiple choice question first question is quite easy that tells you about frequency if wavelength is given so question is calculate the frequency corresponding to the transition with a wavelength of your 56 nanometer so we know that frequency is related to c by lambda where c is your velocity of light and lambda is your wavelength the lambda is given it is 56 nanometer but it means that 56 into 10 to the power minus 9 meter if we we calculate this we will get the frequency in per second which is basically hertz so it is quite easy question and if you do calculation then what will you get is 5.4 into 10 to the power 15 hertz so this is the frequency of light of wavelength 56 nanometer now let's go to second question in this you have to identify the region of electromagnetic spectrum where the wave number of given transition is 2000 cm inverse so these are the two energy states and you have to tell that if wave number of given transition is 2000 cm inverse then what is the region of electromagnetic spectrum and this is uh, this you have to know uh, because the wavelength corresponding to 2000 cm inverse false in ia region and so answer is infrared region the next question is what is the selection rule for rotational transition what is the selection rule for rotational transition there are four option delta j is equal to 0 delta j is equal to plus minus 1 delta j is equal to plus minus 2 and d all of the above we have already discussed this in our previous lecture so we know that selection rule for rotational transition is delta j is equal to plus minus 1 so answer will be b next question is upon isotope substitution of higher mass what happens reduced mass increases energy of transition level decreases rotational constant decreases all of the above so we need to know how to write reduced mass and we know that reduced mass is m1 into m2 divided by m1 plus m2 m1 plus m2 and so if we substitute an element with its isotope with higher mass what we are going to get is your increase in reduced mass and then we know that frequency of your transition is equal to 1 by 2 pi root k by mu so here your reduced mass will increase and if reduced mass increases your frequency will decrease so this is also right and then about rotational constant so b is equal to so we need to know what is b and b is your inversely proportional to your 1 by i and since i relates to mu you can also write 1 by mu and so your b will decrease with increase in mu which is reduced mass so basically all of the above the d option is correct 
Now, next question is the rotational Raman transitions lie between two rotational levels, two vibrational levels, two electronic levels, and rotational and vibrational levels. So, if you remember rotational Raman transition, you will be able to answer this question very easily, and the answer is your D. Now, next question is what is the selection rule for rotational Raman transition? So, the options given are delta j is equal to 0, delta j is equal to plus minus 1, delta j is equal to plus minus 2, and d is both a and b. So, answer is your delta j is equal to plus minus 2. I have discussed this in detail in the rotational Raman transition. Uh, and it was quite clear that y delta j should be equal to plus minus 2. So, answer is C. Now, you go to a specifics of IR spectrum and next question based on that, question is the region of uh, IR spectrum between 1400 to 600 centimeter inverse represents. So, these are the regions, fingerprint region, low frequency region, functional group region and none of the above and the answer is fingerprint region and this is very important region if you want to get a structural feature of a molecule using IR spectroscopy. Which of the following molecule possesses IR active vibration? So, next question is based on uh, the selection rule. You must know what is the selection rule for vibrational spectroscopy and rotational spectroscopy and uh, the things we know is that dipole moment of the molecule must change during the vibration. So, in this the one which possesses IR active vibration is NO, NO because its dipole changes during the vibration. Now, next question is identify which of the following is not a bending molecular vibration. So, there are five different kind of vibration is given. Uh, one is wagging, then twisting, stretching, scissoring, rocking and we know that that a stretching is not a bending vibration, a stretching is not a bending vibration. So, answer is C, you have a stretching, symmetric stretching vibration, this is your asymmetric stretching vibration, in plane bending. So, in plane bending can be of two types, scissoring and rocking. So, scissoring both are moving in towards each other, whereas in rocking there is like rocking between two different positions. Out of plane bending and out of plane bending will be again of two types and your wagging and twisting, the wagging and twisting. So, you must uh, remember these different types of uh, vibrational modes. In this the wagging, twisting, scissoring and rocking are type of bending molecular vibration uh, while stretching is not. So, answer is C. Now, after multiple choice question, let us go to some problems related to rotational spectroscopy and this is a question based on spacing between uh, rotational lines. So, question is given for a gaseous SCL molecule the internuclear distance is found to be 143 picometer. If the rotational spectrum of SCL comprises of equally distance lines, calculate the spacing between the lines. So, you have to calculate a spacing between the lines. What is given is internuclear distance. So, spacing between the lines is to be if you remember where b is equal to h by 8 pi square ic ic 
where B is in wave number unit, wave number unit. If we want to calculate the spacing between rotational line and Hertz unit, then the C will not be here. The spacing will always be equal to 2B. Only thing is the formula will differ when you are uh, expressing B in terms of Hertz, then there will be no C, but if you are expressing B in terms of centimeter inverse, then you need to write H into 8 pi a square IC. So, 2B will be 2H divided by 8 pi a square IC, 2H divided by 8 pi a square IC. So, first thing we need to know is I because H and C are constant and we know the value of H and C and H is your 6.626 into 10 to the power minus 34 joule second whereas your C is 3 into 10 to the power 10 centimeter per second. So, here I have calculated B in terms of centimeter inverse unit or wave number unit basically and wave number unit can also be expressed either as meter inverse or centimeter inverse. If we are using meter inverse, then we have to express C in terms of meter per second. If we want answer in centimeter inverse, then we have to express velocity of light in centimeter per second. So, H and C are the constants whose values are already known. What we need to calculate is I. And for I, you need to know reduced mass which is mu. A mu is given by m1 m2 divided by m1 plus m2. And m1 m2 is given here, is, this is m1, this is m2. And you can calculate the reduced mass using this formula. One thing you must keep in mind that m1 is mass of one molecule, mass of one molecule or mass of one atom. It is not mass of one mole of atom or molecule. So, what does that mean is that uh, you have to express m1 in atomic mass unit, atomic mass unit not in gram per mole. So, uh, but if you suppose take m1 in gram per mole unit, then you need to divide that by Avogadro number. That will give you mass of one molecule or one atom, not one mole of molecule or one mole of atom. So, this thing you need to keep in mind and then R you need to express in meter and then you can calculate I is equal to mu R square. So, you can calculate moment of inertia using I is equal to mu R square. The mu already you have calculated and R is 1.43 in 10 to the power minus 10 meter and so your moment of inertia will be in kg per meter square. And once you put here in this equation, then you can get the value of 2B which will tell you about the spacing between the lines which is equal to 16.8 centimeter inverse. Okay, let us go to next question. In this question, you have to calculate frequency wave number of transition from the rotational spectra. So, question is from a pure rotational spectrum of NO molecule the bond length of NO is found to be 1.15 angstrom. Calculate the frequency corresponding to changes in rotational quantum number j is equal to 3 to j is equal to 4, j is equal to 3 to j is equal to 4. So, certainly we need to calculate B for that, first you need to calculate the moment of inertia and for moment of inertia 
we need reduced mass and bond length. Bond length is already given. So first we need to calculate your reduced mass. So reduced mass of NO will be given by mass of N multiplied by mass of O divided by mass of N plus mass of O. Here we are taking mass of 1 nitrogen, not 1 mole of nitrogen. Here you will take mass of 1 oxygen and again this is mass of 1 nitrogen plus mass of 1 oxygen. So this is 14 and 16 divided by 14 plus 16. We now need to divide by Avogadro number because 14 and 16 gram is basically the weight of 1 mole of nitrogen or mass of 1 mole of nitrogen and mass of 1 mole of oxygen respectively. So we need to divide by Avogadro number and once we divide by Avogadro number what we are going to get is your reduced mass in kg. First you will get reduced mass in gram and then you divide by 1000 you will get reduced mass in kg. Now we can calculate moment of inertia by using this equation I is equal to mu into R square R is already given that is 1.15 against term and that is basically 1.15 into 10 to the power minus 10 meter. So you square this and multiplied by this uh, reduced mass, you will get moment of inertia in kg meter square. So now we know what is the moment of inertia. Now let's go and calculate your rotational constant. Rotational constant in wave number unit is your h divided by 8 pi square ic. So b is equal to h divided by 8 pi square ic. Here this is in wave number unit, wave number unit, wave number unit. If we want to express b in hertz unit then we need to just remove this c, this c. So now we can go ahead and calculate b since we know what is the value of h, what is the value of c and what is the value of i. So this is your value of h, this is what we calculated and this is your velocity of light in centimeter per second and so our b will be in centimeter inverse unit. If we take c in meter per second then we will get the answer in meter inverse unit and the answer is 1.96 centimeter inverse and now we can calculate what is the frequency required for transition from j is equal to 3 to j is equal to 4. Now again you keep in mind some, sometime you write nu bar as 2bj and in some book you will find it is 2bj plus 1 but that is not basically different because when you express your new bar in 2bj, then I am talking about j value for the excited state. And when I say new bar is equal to 2bj plus 1, then the j is the value from value of the energy level from where transition is happening, from where transition is happening. So here, uh, the value of j is 3 and so you can get nu bar and the nu bar will be 2b into 4, b we have already calculated and so nu bar is 15.68 centimeter inverse. Now next question is basically to look at the effect of isotopes. Question uh, reads as if the bond length in both HF and DF molecule is same and it is given as 0 0.03, uh, 0 0.053 nanometer. Now we have to compare the value of reduced mass. So when you are going from HF to DF and bond length is same, then 
what is the effect of isotope on reduced mass, moment of inertia, rotational constant, a wave number for the transition j is equal to 2 to j is equal to 3. So, let us go first calculate reduced mass mu h f will be mass of 1 hydrogen atom multiplied mass of 1 fluorine atom divided by mass of 1 hydrogen atom plus mass of 1 fluorine atom. When you do the calculation, what you will get is 1.58 into 10 by power minus 27 kg. Same calculation you can do for DF molecule and the answer will be 3 into 10 by power minus 27 kg. And so, you can just uh, divide mu df by mu hf and you can see what will the value of reduced mass for these two molecules. If you notice it, the mu df is almost twice that of mu hf. Now, let us go and calculate moment of inertia and moment of inertia is given by mu r square and uh, r is taken to be constant and is equal to 0.053 nanometer. When you do the appropriate substitution, what you are going to get is moment of inertia in kg meter square and this is your 4.44 into 10 to the power minus 48. And for d f, it will b equal to I think this will be almost double of that this is wrong. So, please correct it probably this is 8.88 you do the calculation it is not very difficult. Why I am saying double because mu of i h f is half of mu of d f. So, please make the appropriate correction. Now, once we know the mu value and i value, we can go ahead and look at the rotational constant for these two molecules. And if you do a calculation for h f using b is equal to h by 8 pi square i c, you will get the b value for h f equal to 63.10 centimeter inverse. And B of D f is 33.24 centimeter inverse, 33.24 centi inverse, uh, centimeter inverse. So, this is right. Now, you see that this rotational constant is inversely proportional to moment of inertia and since moment of inertia of D f is twice that of H f and so B value will be, B value of D f will be half of B value of H f approximately half of b value of b value of um, hf and that's what it is written here that by using the concept that rotational constant inversely proportional to reduced mass we can calculate the b value of df since we know b value of hf so we may not need to calculate this we can simply do we can simply use this formula b h f into mu h f by mu d f. So, after the calculation of rotational constant for h f and d f, now we will see what is the value of wave number for the transition j is equal to 2 to j is equal to 3. So, we can use this formula to know the wave number again j is value of rotational level from where transition is happening, from where transition is happening. So, here transition is happening from j is equal to 2. So, j is equal to 2 here and so you can calculate the 2 b into j plus 1 and this is 2 into 63.1 into 3 and the answer is 378.6 centimeter inverse. For d f molecule, same equation can be used and then wave number what we get for j is equal to 2 to j is equal to 3 transition is 199.38 centimeter inverse. Again you can see your new bar d f is half of new bar h f 
and that is not surprising because B of DF is half of B for HF. So, replacing H with D, mu uh, gets double. So, I think this is wrong. Mu gets double, where as B and nu bar reduced to nearly half. Okay, so now let's see another question based on effect of isotopes. So, question is if the natural abundance of H218O in H216O is 1.3 percent, calculate the relative intensity of two rotational lines for the same transition in case of H216O. So, natural abundance of H218O is given 1.3. So, natural abundance of H216O can be calculated and that is 100 minus 1.3 and that is 98.7. So, natural abundance of H218O is 1.3 and that should be equal to intensity for this H218O divided by intensity for H216O plus intensity of H218O multiplied by 100. So, I star is intensity due to S2 18 O and I is intensity due to S2 16 O. So, natural abundance of S2 18 O is equal to your 90 sorry this is 16 O natural abundance of S2 16 O will be equal to 98.7 and that will be equal to i divided by i plus i star into 100 and if you take the ratio of this, this i plus i star will get cancelled out. So, i by i star is equal to 98.7 divided by 1.3 and that gives you 76 is to 1. So, for the same transition rotational line for H216O is 76 times intense than that of H218O. Now, next question is calculation of atomic mass. The question is for a diatomic molecule NX, the spectral lines are equally spaced in its pure rotational spectrum. If average value of spacing between the lines and the equilibrium distance of NX molecule are 3.551 centimeter inverse and 1.128 angstrom and calculate the atomic mass of X. So, based on the rotational spectra, you can calculate the atomic masses and this is one of the example. So, again first we will calculate the reduced mass and reduced mass is mass of n multiplied by mass of x divided by mass of n plus mass of x into 1 divided by 6.023 into 10 to the power 23. So, this we are doing because we are taking m n as molar mass. So, if we take m n as molar mass then we will divide it by Avogadro number. So, this is your Mn you know that 14 into Mx divided by 14 plus Mx into 1 by 6.023 into 10 to the power 23 and this is equal to uh, mu obtained from let me see this mu obtained from. So, the uh, mu is what 1.24 in 10 to the power minus 23. So, if you put it here, you can calculate mu mx is equal to 16.01 and since mx is equal to 16.01, so your molecule is NO and your atom x is oxygen, atom x is oxygen. So, the question 14 is that if you record the rotational spectrum of a molecule in which 
you do not know the atomic mass of one of the atom. So, here we are talking about diatomic atom, diatomic molecule and what you do is you take a rotational spectrum, look at the what is the spacing between two lines that will give you B, from B you can know I and I will give you reduced mass if you know bond length, if you know bond length and once you know mu then you can calculate the mass of the other atom which is x here. And what we showed you is that mass of the unknown atom is 16 gram and that tells you that the x atom is your oxygen atom. Now, next question is calculation of dipole moment. I have not given a question, but I will show you one result from a literature how to calculate dipole moment of molecule using rotational spectroscopy. So, for that we know that in absence of electric field the energy of rotational levels is given by this uh, h square by 8 pi a square i j j plus 1 and j is rotational quantum number and uh, when you place the molecule in the electric field then degeneracy is destroyed and in that case uh, for a linear molecule you give E r with this equation, E r with this equation. And uh, if I plot E r versus E square, what I am going to get is mu square which is basically here please do not confuse uh, this mu with the reduced mass, this one is your dipole moment, dipole moment moment. So, if you plot E r versus E square where E is your electrical field, you can get the dipole moment of a molecule of a molecule. Okay, so, E r is basically delta E r is given by this value and then delta nu is given by this value. So, delta nu is basically delta E r by h and you can see that it is 2 h square here it is 2 h and when I plot delta nu versus E square I can get the value of dipole moment uh, where mu is your dipole moment. So, I am showing you the calculation done in a paper. This is paper from PCCP uh, that is published in 2005 they calculated the dipole moment of any sol and benzyl dehyde and here you see delta nu versus E square that is what we generally plot to get the dipole moment and they have calculated dipole moment, they have calculated dipole moment using this plot. Similarly, this is for any sol and this is for benzyl dehyde. So, this is the way to calculate your dipole moment of a molecule using the splitting of rotational lines in electric field, electric field which is known as Stark effect. Now, next question is from rotational Raman spectroscopy. So, what is the separation between spectral lines in rotational Raman spectrum? We know the separation between spectral lines in rotational spectrum and that is equal to 2 B. Now, we are going to see what is the separation between spectral lines in rotational Raman spectrum. So, this is your energy of the rotational levels F j is equal to B j j plus 1. Now, if you take F in hertz unit then B will be in hertz and if you take f in centimeter inverse unit then b will be in centimeter inverse. So, this f is given by b j j plus 1 and let us take this in centimeter inverse 
then B is in centimeter inverse. Now, selection rule for rotational transition, rotational Raman transition are delta J is equal to plus minus 2 that I have already discussed. So, let us calculate nu bar, nu bar is your wave number for transition between J to J plus 1 level, J to J plus 1 level. So, uh, that is given by F J dash, this is let us take this as a J dash. So, if J dash minus F J and if you take J dash for J dash, you can write B J dash J dash plus 1 minus B J J plus 1 and uh, J dash will be J plus 2 because your selection rule for rotational transition delta J is equal to plus minus 2. So, your new bar is B J dash J dash plus 1 minus B J J plus 1 and if you take B out, this is the expression and we know that J dash is equal to J plus 2 because that is what is the selection rule for rotational Raman transition. So, let us write rotational Raman, Raman transition and so, new bar is equal to B J plus 2 for J dash you put J plus 2, J dash plus 1, J plus 3 minus J J plus 1 and what you get is this equation 4 B J plus 3 by 2, J plus 3 by 2. So, since J is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, so J increases by 1 and so a spacing between a spectral lines of rotational Raman spectrum is 4 B. So, the separation between spectrum lines in rotational spectrum is 2 B, whereas separation between spectral lines in rotational Raman spectrum is 4 B. Now, next question is based on vibrational spectroscopy. For a diatomic molecule CO, the force constant is 19.06 Newton per meter. So, you need to calculate what is the fundamental vibrational frequency in centimeter inverse. Again, first we have to calculate mu. I have discussed uh, calculation of mu uh, several times, so I am not going to discuss it again. The value which you obtain from mu for CO molecule is 1.138 in 10 to the power minus 26 kg. So, fundamental frequency will be your nu bar is 1 by 2 pi c root k by mu. Again, the wave number can be so, this is wave number, so it will be in meter inverse or centimeter inverse unit. So, just put the values 1 by 2 pi c is your 3 into 10 to the power 10 centimeter per second inverse. So, please correct this. This is centimeter per second inverse and this is your k which is force constant. It is given 1906 Newton per meter and this is your reduced mass which we just calculated for CO molecule and what we will get is um, wave number to be 2172.2 centimeter inverse. Now, next question is what will be the spacing in electron volt between vibrational energy level of a CO molecule if the force constant is 1748 Newton per meter. Now, we are going to calculate the frequency of vibrational transition. Again, we will calculate mu, mu just we calculated for CO, this is 11.4 into 10 to the power minus 27 kg. Uh, so, frequency of the vibrational transition is your this formula we have already discussed and that equal to 2078 centimeter inverse or 2078 centimeter inverse. And this we can convert into delta E, delta E and your nu bar is related by this equation, one electron volt is equal to 8066 centimeter inverse and so delta E can be calculated by dividing 2078 with 8066 centimeter per electron volt and what you are going to get is 0 0.258 electron volt. So, this is your spacing between the vibrational levels of CO molecule. Now, next question in this 
35 Cl molecule is a 35 Cl molecule is irradiated with a mercury lamp of a wavelength of 443.6 nanometer. If the fundamental vibrational frequency for the molecule is this second inverse, what we need to calculate is what is the Raman line in nanometer, okay? Stokes Raman line. The frequency of mercury light can be calculated using this formula nu is equal to c by lambda, c again we have taken in meter per second and you can express lambda in meter and then we can get frequency in second inverse, frequency in second inverse and so a Stokes line will be observed at nu frequency of incident light minus frequency of vibration. Here it is a fundamental vibrational frequency. We have just calculated what is the frequency of incident light and that is 67.63 into 10 to the power 13 second inverse and then fundamental frequency is given. So, you just subtract this from frequency of incident light and you can get frequency of the Stokes Raman line and that is equal to 62.234 into 10 to the power 13 second inverse. And uh, you can also calculate wavelength of Raman by using this. We know that frequency and wavelength is related by this equation C by nu and so you can calculate what will be the wavelength of Stokes line, Raman line, Stokes Raman line. Okay, so next question is identify the allowed vibrational transition for a diatomic molecule and again this is based on selection rule. So, you know that for allowed vibrational transition delta B is plus minus 1 and so first is not allowed, second is allowed, third is allowed. Okay. In the B, it is delta V is equal to plus 1 and here delta V is equal to minus 1. Okay, so, next question is basically to calculate dissociation energy using vibrational spectroscopy. Just uh, before going to discuss that question, I will like to have recap for an harmonic oscillator. So, energy of vibrational levels for an anharmonic oscillator is given by this equation where V is vibrational quantum number and if you try to express this in wave number unit, you need to divide by SC and that is generally given by this symbol GV and that is basically V plus half omega E minus higher wave number term. So, now you have wave number, you can calculate the difference between 2 in wave number unit and when you 2 vibration level from V to V plus 1. So, if you calculate the difference between this vibration level in centimeter inverse, you are going to get this formula. So, G V plus 1 minus G V is equal to omega E minus 2 X C omega E V plus 1. And so, if we plot this versus V plus 1, then we can get X E and omega E, X E and omega E. Okay, and uh, now let us uh, think of how to calculate the vibrational level with maximum energy. And if I want to calculate the vibrational level at which energy is maximum, then I need to differentiate that and put that equal to 0. When you do that, you will get V is equal to 1 by 2 X C minus half. And if you put this in this equation and then you subtract by your 0 point energy, what you are going to get is D. This I have explained uh, in detail in the last 
lecture, in the last lecture. I have explained this in detail. But what I showed you that d is equal to omega e minus divided by 4x e omega e. So, after this recap, let us see this question. The question is, the fundamental and first overtone transition are centered at 1876.06 centimeter inverse and 3724.20 centimeter inverse respectively and you have to calculate these five parameters. So, let us first start with uh, fundamental absorption, fundamental absorption uh, frequency is given by a uh, wave number is given by this omega e multiplied by 1 minus 2 x e and that is given 1876.06 centimeter inverse and for first overtone wave number is given by this equation. So, for first overtone wave number is equal to 2 omega e multiplied by 1 minus 3 x e. So, you have this 2 and so you have two equations and two unknowns, unknowns are omega e and x e. So, you can solve these two equations to get the value of omega e and x e. Easiest way to uh, do it, divide 1 by 2 and when you divide 1 by 2, you can get the value of x e and when you put x e in one of the equations, then you can get value of omega e. So, it is simple calculation, you can do it easily, so please do it. Now, once you know that, what is the value of omega e and x e, you can calculate g 0, which is basically 0 point energy and the 0 point energy is given by this equation. This equation has already been discussed in the last lectures, last two lectures. So, please just go and see these equations. So, what now I do is I just plug in the value of omega e and x e which I obtained in the previous slide and when you do that, you will get the value of g naught which is basically the um, zero point energy. Now, you can use omega e to get the value of k, basically you have to calculate k because you know mu uh, reduced mass is known. So, reduced mass is basically this and omega e we have already obtained. So, we can get the value of force constant. So, if you remember the question, the fourth point is to calculate force constant and that is what we are calculating and force constant is 1.593 into 10 to the power 3 meter inverse. Now, we need to calculate your dissociation energy for that I told that first you have to calculate the vibrational level with maximum energy. So, you need to find out the value of V at which the energy is maximum and this is the formula for V max and once you solve that you will get V max is equal to 68. Now, we will put the value of V max in the equation for G V when we do that, we will get g max. So, g max is v max plus half omega e and 1 minus v max half x e and when you solve this, you will get the value of g max that is energy of the vibrational level whose energy is maximum and it is given in centimeter inverse. And you can calculate E dissociation. E dissociation is basically G max minus G 0 into S c. S c is multiplied since this the G value is in centimeter inverse. So, if you multiply it by S c then you can get the energy in joule unit in joule unit. So, this is your dissociation energy in joule. Now, let us go to some application based questions. Uh, particularly in vibrational spectroscopy. So, here first question is how does conjugation to the carbonyl group affects its IR stretching frequency? Conjugation weakens the carbonyl pi bond. 
So, you can see that if we look at the resonance, so this will get a double bond and the, that will get a partial single bond. So, conjugation leads to weakening in carbonyl pi bond and uh, that decreases the value of K, it decreases the value of K and so frequency of CO bond decreases. So, on conjugation frequency of CO bond decreases. Now, we will look at how does IR stretching frequency of carbonyl group in cyclic ketone increase with in decrease in number of carbon. So, what happens that when number of carbon in cycle increases, then ring, ring angle decreases and that affects the frequency. So, ring strain increases with decrease in ring angle. So, here there should be increase. So, as the number of carbon increases, the ring angle increase. So, if I going from this to this side, your ring, ring angle decreases and once ring angle decreases, ring strain increases with decrease in ring angle and so energy and thereby new force U bond increases. So, in this question what we are going to look at, can we apply vibrational spectroscopy to distinguish between position of keto group, position of keto group. So, here is aryl alkyl ketone and here is di alkyl ketone. So, now you see that this one is involved in conjugation with the ring, benzene ring and we know that on conjugation this K decreases and if K decreases your frequency will also decrease and so frequency of CO stretching in aryl alkyl ketone comes at a smaller wave number in comparison to dialkyl ketone. So, conjugation weakens the carbonyl pi bond. Now, again we will see another example, uh, we want to distinguish between the position of keto group and this is your 2,4 heptane dione, this is 2,4 heptane dione and this is 2,5 heptane dione. Can we distinguish between these two? So, here you see this is this CH is basically between two CO group and so here H is acidic and so this can exist in all form this can exist in enol form and uh, if it exists in enol form what will happen is you will have a peak for OH stretching which will come around 3200 centimeter inverse and your frequency for CO will be at a smaller value because here K for CO will be small. Whereas, this conjugation, this enol formation is not possible in this structure and so your new for CO will be at 1700 centimeter inverse and there will be no peak for OH stretching, no peak for OH stretching. So, now next question is can we distinguish two esters? The example of methyl benzoate and phenyl acetate and now you see that here there is conjugation between these two bond and in this there is conjugation with the lone pair. So, due to conjugation on O group here frequency will be at 70, 60 centimeter inverse where as new for CO stretching in the above case will be at 17, 10 centimeter inverse. We can also distinguish between nitrile and isonitrile using vibrational spectroscopy. Uh, for nitrile compound, the frequency for C triple bond N stretching will be at 2275 centimeter inverse, whereas new for this isonitrile will be at 2180 centimeter inverse. So, using that, you can distinguish between nitrile and isonitrile. Mono and polyalkylated, poly substituted alkyl halide, 
mono and poly substituted alkyl halide can also be distinguished for example the for example one chlorobutane and one one dichlorobutane can be distinguished by irs spectroscopy here frequency will be at uh, lower wave number when you have only one cl but if you have two cl then this frequency will increase to 790 centimeter inward so you will be able to distinguish between mono and poly substituted alkyl halide okay so next question is how we can use ir spectroscopy to distinguish between ortho and para nitrophenol so you know that in ortho nitrophenol the hydrogen of oh group in phenol is in hydrogen bond with nitro group and that basically leads to broadening of band so wherever there is a hydrogen bond of oh group there will be a broadening and this broadening will be observed between 3500 to 3100 cm inwards in para nitrophenol the hydrogen bonding is not possible between this hydrogen and this nitro group and so you will get a sharp band corresponding to oh group at 3350 cm inwards so ortho and para nitrophenol can be distinguished using ir spectroscopy so in this lecture i have looked at several different kind of questions some are multiple choice questions and some are problem based questions and some is application related questions so there are a lot of different kind of application we can think of uh, between rotational uh, applications of rotational and vibrational spectroscopy in the next lecture i will start with your atomic spectroscopy so thank you very much for listening the books i have already told you which books i am using it for example in organic spectroscopy i am taking help of william camp camp book on organic spectroscopy which is from palgrave publication and these two are for physical spectroscopy and this is one basic books a uh, book on uh, your chemistry basic uh, book on chemistry so thank you very much and thank you for listening